This is part 128 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss date time 2 from parts function in SQL Server. This is a new function introduced in SQL Server 2012. It returns date time 2 value. Here is the syntax for this function. Date time 2 value has got two parts within it, the date part and the time part. For this function to construct the date part, it requires three pieces of information, year, month and day. And for the same function to construct the time part, it requires hour, minute, seconds, fractions and precision. We'll discuss fractions and precision parameters in just a bit. But these are the parameters required for this function. All these parameters have a data type of integer. If any of these parameters have invalid values, then the function returns an error. Similarly, if any of these parameters are null, this function is going to return null. But one important thing to keep in mind is that if the precision parameter is specified as null, then this function is not going to return null. Instead, it will return an error. We have an example here. Notice we have specified valid values for all the parameters. Year is 2015, month is 11, day is 15, 20 hours, 55 minutes, 55 seconds, fractions is 0, and precision is 0. So when we execute this, we get November 15, 2015, 20 hours, 55 minutes, and 55 seconds. I have the same query here. So when we execute this, we get the date that we expect. Now let's discuss about the fractions and precision parameters. The fractions parameter depends on the precision parameter. For example, if I specify fractions as 1 and if I specify precision as 7, then each fraction here represents 100 nanoseconds. So in this case, we are going to get 100 nanoseconds. Similarly, if I specify a precision value of 3, then each fraction here represents a millisecond. So if I have 5 as the value for fractions parameter, then that means, you know, these two parameters are going to give us 5 milliseconds. So when we execute this, look at the milliseconds bit here. We get 5 milliseconds. First of all, notice the precision is 3. Similarly, if I specify a precision of 7, the first thing to notice is we have got a precision of 7 there and we have 500 nanoseconds there. So the maximum value for precision is 7. If I specify a value beyond 7, we are going to get an error. Notice what this error says. It says specified scale 8 is not valid. The maximum value for precision is 7. Another way of thinking this precision parameter is like this. So I have a value of 5 for fractions. If I specify precision as 1, you can think of that as 5 divided by 10. Okay. If I specify precision as 2, then 5 divided by 100. If I specify the precision 3, 5 divided by 1000. So what is 5 divided by 1000? 5 divided by 1000 is going to give us 5 milliseconds, 0 0.005. So when we execute this, we should get 5 milliseconds. Similarly, precision is 4. That means 5 divided by 10,000. It goes on like that until a value of 7. Now, all the values have to be valid values. Let's say, for example, for month parameter, if I specify the value as 15, though it is integer, it's not a valid value for month. So let's put these values back to 0. So when we execute this, this function is going to throw an error because that's not a valid value. OK, so let's put that valid value back. And similarly, if we specify any of the parameters as null, then the function is going to return null. Now, on the other hand, if we specify null for precision, the function is not going to return null. Instead, we get an error. We have all those examples right here. Another new function introduced in SQL Server 2012 is time from parts function. From the name, you can easily tell this function is going to return just the time bit. And to construct the time bit, this function requires you know, hour, minute, seconds, fractions and precision parameters. Notice this function does not have the date parts, that is the year, month, and day. Okay, It has only the time pieces that this function requires. So this is going to return a time value. So the usage of this function is very similar to the usage of date time 2 from parts function. It's just that we don't have the parameters for constructing the date part. All right. 
in our previous video sessions we discussed about date time from paths function what is date time from paths function going to do it's going to return a date time value and we have another function here date time 2 from paths function this function returns date time 2 value so what is the difference between date time and date time 2 we'll discuss that in detail in our next video session thank you for listening and have a great day